Welcome everybody to Cup with Gup on this beautiful Tuesday, September 21st, 2021. We have a little NFL power ranking, some waiver wire ads, and then I will be breaking down the Ryder Cup tool, showing you how uh, you can choose to utilize it if you are a member or if you are not a member and you would like to try it out this week on a very special format for DK PGA uh, Golf. You can use CUP, C-U-P, get 15% off. It includes a seven-day free trial. Yeah, I know there may be a few people that try it out just to uh, use that tool and then cancel. That's fine. I believe if they uh, come in, they'll enjoy the community over in the GC Warrior Room, along with all the other content we have, college football, NASCAR, NFL, UFC, NBA is around the corner. Uh, Tons of value for what we offer. Um, So if you're listening to this on the audio version, after once I get to the golf, um, probably won't make a lot of sense, but you can listen. Uh, if you want to shoot over to YouTube um, and watch the video, you'll be able to see uh, how you can utilize the tool that I have built. Uh, built in 2019 for the President's Cup, but enhanced it um, for the Ryder Cup this week. I will have both the listener leagues in the um, description of the pod. NFL and Ryder Cup, we did two this week. Um, go ahead and get those filled up for us. Ryder Cup only has 200 in it. I uh, didn't know how much interest would be, but DK uh, reached out, so we went ahead and did one. Uh, get a little fun going if you wanted to um, participate in that. Like and subscribe us on YouTube. Tell me on YouTube your favorite wire uh, waiver wire ad for week three. Rate and review us on iTunes. I will be doing more winners uh, from people who have rated to review us and um, the like and subscribe YouTube, as well as anybody that leaves comments in the videos. You're all tossed into anytime I'll do a giveaway, um, probably do one Thursday and I will be announcing the winners from the big uh, new sign up upgrade as well. Um, we got four winners there, I think, um, uh, maybe a little bit more. Um, so that'll be exciting. Someone will win that Bryson, uh, DeChambeau autograph card could be more valuable after this weekend. If he has a good Ryder cup, looks like, uh, him and Brooks are going to play nice apparently, or we think so. At least from some of the things I've seen today, monkey knife fight, use the code GUPS, G U P S for a hundred percent match up to a hundred dollars. Uh, I'll have my plays for NFL PGA. I don't, I don't know if they're doing Ryder cup for sure, but if they are, I will, uh, do that. We have college football player props now. We had a great night last night on Monkey Knife Fight. Um, so I'll be giving those away for sure Thursday for the Thursday night football game. And then if they do have um, Ryder Cup, I will. Let me see if I can just, while we're doing the pot real quick, see if they have anything up for golf yet. One exciting thing is a college football player props, so that's something we'll be able to take advantage of, I think, with uh, Bobby's information that he puts out every week um you know as well as some of the stuff i know i I think that'll be a good thing for us let's see click on the golf nothing yet but if they do have some Ryder cup i will do that but for sure we'll have college football nfl even got some usc stuff in there Uh, i'll be released on this cup in the cup with cup pod like i did yesterday for the monday night football if you did that you did very well we hit two out of three including the four x touchdown um parlay so go to monkeyfightnight.com monkeyknifefight.com or the link is in the description of the audio use gups you get a hundred percent match up to a hundred dollars and i'll have some thursday night plays out during that cup with cup on thursday um as well as some college football plays uh on friday and stuff underdog right now they have started their nba best ball uh and hockey um best ball. So if you want to get into that, use the code GUP, G-U-P. You get a free $10 when you deposit $10. Um, they also have been having a big Thursday night and Sunday night contest, um, Sunday day as well. But Thursday night, they have a pretty nice contest. If you want to go check check that out, they're in the description as well. Use the code GUP, G-U-P, free $10 when you deposit $10 on Underdog. Awesome app if you want to go download that. Power rankings for me, um, small shakeup, but, you know, interesting game with the Chiefs this week. Uh, I'm not going to downgrade too much. I mean, they, it was a home loss. So that was a little bit of a knock, but the Ravens are, you know, obviously capable anytime with um, Lamar and company at the helm. 
worry a little bit about Kansas City, you know, defensively. Similar like Green Bay, you know, are, are the defenses, you know, by the time we get to the playoffs, it's totally different. Um, so I have moved Tampa Bay to number one. Probably looked the best. Um, Dallas came, got a big road win. So that makes that Tampa Bay win look even a little bit more impressive. The Falcons won. It was 28-25 going, going to the fourth. They get two pick sixes. I think it was a little more competitive than what the box score would have showed. Um, but the Falcons, you know, obviously they're going to be one of the bottom tier teams in the league. Kansas City st- or just drops to two. I got the Rams third. Arizona and Cleveland are tied in the value. I got Arizona fourth, Cleveland five. Seattle, Buffalo are tied in the value. Seattle six, Buffalo seven. And then Dallas, Green Bay, San Francisco, and Tennessee are all have the same value. But when I rank them out, Dallas, I have at eight, Green Bay at nine, San Francisco at 10. Um, then the bubble teams for me are Tennessee, Chargers, Pats, and Ravens. Um, all these teams, once you kind of get there, I mean, they're going to have one and two question marks. We're going to start having injury stuff come in, um, you know, like Chicago. They could get a bump. You know, I think Fields will long-term definitely be better than Dalton, but could he short-term give them a big boost? San Francisco, I'd probably have higher. Um, they just got so many injuries. Again, they had them last year. Now, who knows what's going to happen at running back. Um I think they're uh, Mitchell's out. Hasey got hurt. Sermon had one carry and got hurt. Uh, Green Bay, the defense is still a little suspect, but they did tighten up when need to. Now, I don't know how much that was a rain at the end. Um, you know, Goss fumble had nothing to do with the defense. He just dropped the ball. Uh, but they played They played all right. They, you know, I, we'll see. It was at home against the Detroit, which Detroit's got some fight in them, but, you know, I wouldn't go all out on them uh, just yet. And then Dallas, is, it's going to be the, you know, are they going to continue? I mean, that's a good win on the road against a good offense. You hold them to that low of a scoring game. Um, you know, we'll see if they can continue to improve and get better. They're a team that if they get just minorly better on the defensive side of the ball, you know the offense is going to be all right. Uh, Pollard shining. It, you know, that just gives them another punch with Zeke in there. I don't think Zeke's bad or anything. Um, then they got one of the best top three or four wide receiver uh, cores in the league. Um you know, that, you know, Chargers, I'm not bumping down too much. They're right there on that fringe as well. Uh, same with Patriots. I got to see more out of them. Uh, Dolphins, you know, lose to uh, in Baltimore. So that's that next tier, just all right there uh, as we head into week three. Lines are out. Uh, talked about them a little bit yesterday, some early ones. Uh, Arizona was one that caught my eye. Um, you know, after going through why well, I, I liked them yesterday, it was one of the ones I liked, just early looks. And then now that, you know, you get the rankings updated and all that, um, you know, the Giants laying three at home. Um, it kind of interests me a little bit. I, I think Atlanta may be getting a little worse than what they are, um, which means that's a pick them on a neutral site per se. Um, you, you know, so I'm not totally against that. Probably may lean uh, Atlanta there. Um Baltimore lane nine on the road to Detroit. I don't know if that's a big number to lay on the road. I don't care. I know the Lions are the Lions, but uh, and they can be ran on. But that offense can move the ball a little bit. Um, I know the Ravens' D is there, but, you know, that's one that seems a little high going on the road laying nine. Uh, Cleveland minus seven at home against Chicago. That will kind of depend on what, what goes on with the quarterback. I don't think Fields is a downgrade. The market probably will. Um I have to adjust that some. That's one that I keep my eye on. Is it looks like Fields is going to start. Um, it doesn't look like at least Dalton at least missed one game. But does he ever come back? Kind of like you know the Tyrod Justin Herbert deal. All they needed was a spot to get him in. Then then does he come back? Um, Seattle on the road again against Minnesota. I've liked Seattle. Uh, I did have Tennessee as that bounce back week last week plus six. But now Seattle's gone East Coast, back home, and now back somewhat East Coast, not full East Coast, but to Minnesota. Um, I know Minnesota hadn't looked great. That's probably the only thing to keep me from just you know naturally coming out and betting it. But that's one I'll keep my eye on as we go into the week. I'll have more on that um, as we get closer to the end of the week. Waiver wire for me, and I have released one official play already uh, to the premium members if you want to go check that out. Uh, Justin Fields, I think, is, you know – at least worthy of if you're streaming, but he may be a guy you come in and, you know, just because of the rushing upside as well, that if he's available in your league and it maybe you've been streaming quarterbacks, you go ahead and pick him up. 
but he may want to be in there for a while. Uh, we'll see, but he's worthy. Rondell Moore still out there in several leagues. Um, yeah, I've been, I mean, how many, I've talked to him up forever now. Um, was great on Sunday, had him, Osborne, uh, all those guys. Uh, Tim Patrick, still pretty available. I think he's got a pretty good situation there with Bridgewater, uh, if you need it. I mean, these are guys that are just, uh, you know, the more available than not in, in some of the bigger leagues. Uh, Pittman, uh, mentioned him. I still like him this year. I think he could be a good add if you need a wide receiver. Sony Michelle, it looks like Henderson's a little banged up. Um, that may not be a long-term add, uh, but definitely could be viable this week, especially if Henderson's out. I think we saw last we heard was very questionable on Henderson. Uh, Tony Pollard, I'm not. There's some. There's some people higher on him as far as a season long. I don't know where I'm at on him yet. I, I don't mind it if you're, you know, if he does want. I don't think he takes over that backfield, but. Maybe because of how much that offense moves the ball, you know, he winds up – he's better than, you know, one of your running backs you got now who just may be terrible. Um, you know, so if he's available and you can make room, I wouldn't overspend on him, but he's definitely on the list. 49ers, um, I mean, Hasty maybe. He's still – I mean, he got banged up. If he plays and he's the only healthy one, that's certainly a good add. Uh, I would assume everybody that picked up Mitchell, which I was not one of them, uh, paid a lot for him and didn't really drop him. But I guess if Mitchell was out there, someone got mad already or whatever, I would still pick up Mitchell. Um, but Hasey's potential. Patterson's a little bit of a stretch in Atlanta, but because they're getting him involved running and passing, uh, catching the ball, you know, he could be a little nice little flex on some weeks, especially if they get in shootouts. They're going to be – looks like they're going to be, you know, having to score a lot. So – uh, he's one that maybe a sneaky one you could get cheap if you're in an auction tie or you know uh, if you have FAA B bucks to, where you got to spend it. He's a guy I may take a look at. Uh, streaming quarterbacks this week I like Cousins, Bridgewater, and Jones are the three outside of Fields. I think Fields will be number one, but I think he's a legit pickup um, if you're looking to just stream because you've been doing it all year. Those are my three favorite in that order. I think Cousins probably winds up in a shootout again. Bridgewater, pretty solid if you can't get Cousins. And then Jones with the running upside. He looked good last week. Got to give him that credit as uh, potential as well. Prediction strike, we've been talking about it. It's been hot in the GC Warrior Room. Go check it out. I did a video a couple weeks ago. If you want to search that, talking all about it. Um, you know, since that, I've given away like Rondell Moore is up 43%. Hawkinson's up 35%. These are a couple of cheap ones we got on early. Um, if you're not familiar, it's a, you can go to predictionstrike.com, read all about it. If you use the code GUP, G-U-P, all lowercase, you get a free share of a player. And some people are like, well, what if I don't like that player? Well, you sell it. <laughs> I mean, just sell it instantly um, as soon as you get it and go buy someone you do like. So it's still free money in there uh, to utilize. Um, it, it's basically stock market for fantasy sports, a little bit different than jock market in the sense that it doesn't ever end. There's no like this week or this event or anything. It's just an ongoing stock market. So like NBA, they'll be, they'll be right around the corner doing IPOs for the, some of the rookies there. And that's going to be fun, exciting in the GC warrior room to talk about some guys I got on my list right now, Osborne, a dollar 53, a share Pollard, a dollar 91, a share and rugs dollar 97, a share. Or guys you may take a look at, uh, depending on how your portfolio looks. So that kind of wraps up the football. Let's, uh, let me get this up here. I'm going to switch screens so you can see my screen. You should be seeing it now. So this is what I created. Um, after the pod today, earlier, the Smash Factor, and I did do a full pod kind of talking about overall strategy, DK, um, beginning stuff, just the, the basic stuff we need to get through. I'll go more in depth uh, tomorrow on the Cup with Gup as after we analyze and hear. I got several of the press conferences I've seen and some more I want to listen to. Um, this will this is the starting page. It's not really anything you have to do here. I have it listed. Uh, USA Europe projected matches, and I'll show you how I got to that here in a second. My current model rank, which that's all going to change based on pairings and all that kind of stuff. So I factor in statistical stuff, which isn't that big of a deal, but just expectations, uh, potential matches, min-max. There's a whole bunch of formulas I have uh, going into this, and I really haven't updated that yet, but I will have that um, as well. Then we have their base price here. Um, and this will feed in from, we'll see over here, after we get going. So here's the kind of bread and butter. 
I have loaded what I think will be the day one matchups. I'm going to post a V2 of this to the uh, community after this video. Um, the first one I had was just random. This one I'll post will have this projection here. Um, not necessarily the matchup, I think, because I, I don't know. I mean, they're not doing it like President's Cup where you go you versus you or, you know, they'll like, here's my team, here's my team, and they just play each other. Um, and then your projection of the – that that match you know so the rest of these what i'll do when i send it out they'll be blank so what you guys can do uh even this one if you think it's going to be um you know brooks and burger you come down here you pick burger and that'll that flows everything you'll see when we get to it in a second um properly as the results of the match go on so what you're using this for is a to just have a visualization of how you think the alternate shot best ball alternate shot best ball are going to play out and then the singles matches um and more more importantly is how many matches do you think you get so like right now this shows brooks expected matches three or actually look at burger burger three but if you come over here and you go i think burger is going to go out first with Fina for whatever reason let's just i'm just showing you an example it'll flow over here burger now has four so as you get to the, as you get these set, it'll automatically flow this way and you can sort these any way you want. I try to eye it so I can see, you know, okay, how does the teams, does this look like something that could happen um, realistically? And then more importantly, what I'll be doing, I talked about this on the smash factor is, you know, multiple scenarios, not only to get kind of a simulation, um, different projections and stuff, flowing through to the scoring uh, uh what if this happens what if this happens just to see the kind of uh floor and ceiling of certain guys and their price but also once i kind of get a good feel of how i'm i'm at and i'm basically waiting for those final so i, I mentioned on smash factor the pairings will come out sometime between five and eight during the open ceremonies five and eight eastern on thursday night once we have those four, once we have these locked in, well, then we lock those in and we then, then we kind of finalize where we think it's going to go based on this. Over here, you literally just have to make sure this equals 18. Um, you know, you, I know my screen's small, but you can scroll down and see that all of them, um, you know, so if you, ideally it doesn't matter who they have matched up right here. After day one, we'll know. So that'll be, who do I think wins that match? These will become real projections Thursday evening. But then after that, it kind of, you know, if you think, you know, Cantley and Shoffley is going to win, you don't know who they're going to play necessarily, but you think Garcia Westwood would lose that type of deal. You can match them up however you want. And then you just put how many holes you think each team would win, how many you think they would have. Um, if you think a match is going to end early, you can do that. This is getting real, you know, diving into. You can make it pretty – aggressive projections or you can make it light you can do whatever you want all you have to make sure is that it equals eight and that it makes sense right <laughs> so you can't have no holes played international but have usa winning the, the thing that wouldn't you know necessarily make sense it'll flow through for you but doesn't mathematically make sense um then we get down you do the same thing for the individuals as you're doing all this it automatically flows into um this the scoring prediction so it'll give your matches holes one lost have matches won matches halved um you know and lost doesn't necessarily do anything that way so holes not played bonus um that all come it all everything feeds in automatically have nothing to do over here except for this so these are two bonuses that DraftKings has a three hole bonus so if you think someone wins three holes in a row, max one per match. So this can't be higher than this, obviously. This is like your birdie streak. They can get one per match. You can randomly put those in um, just to give some type of bumps. Or if you want to think it through properly, you can certainly do that. No holes lost bonus, which um, not very often you get, which means a tie doesn't count, right? So a guy could win eight holes, tie seven, or, you know, or I guess win, you know, if they have a bunch of ties, normally when it comes in, obviously Tigers actually won almost every hole that, that one year a while back, but um, I don't think that'll happen very often. And then what it does is we got our pricing and our captain pricing, right? We have to, the big strategy for this week is working on not who we think will do well, that matters for sure, but you got to, what's the best optimal fits within the pricing structure and getting the right captain. Um, and a lot of that's going to depend on total matches. Cause even though 
you know, a guy may go two and two if he gets four matches. He's going to accumulate points more likely than not in those matches, that extra match, because, they, you know, if they're somewhat competitive, you know, so would a two and two guy be better than a three and oh? You know, we, we can run through those scenarios. You can try to do some of that work and go, does that extra match outweigh a guy that goes three and oh? Um, I would assume it does. I hadn't done the math yet. That's some of the stuff I'm gonna be doing tonight and tomorrow. And then as you're doing that, what this will do is calculate, all right, there's your standard points, there's your captain points, potential value, um, and let you start piecing together, you know, some guys, okay, well, things work out like they should. Brom still gets you know, a pretty good value here. If he was to go win four matches, um, four and one was this scenario. Um, and, and that's probably what you mainly want to look at is how many matches do you think each guy gets? And if it's a combo pair, we definitely want to make sure we're utilizing that combo. So if you think, you know, more likely than not that a JT and Spieth are going to be together or Patrick and Xander are going to be together for the four matches or three of the four and you think they're going to do good, you probably want them in lineups together because now you're not having to get multiple things right. If they do well, they're both scoring the same. Now, what comes with that is where do you bring your cap? Because they're both high price, right? So is JT and Spieth. You know, do you make one of them the captain? If you do, more times than not, you'd want the cheaper guy, save some money. So then you got, you know, let's say you go Shoffley and Cantley here. Well, that's 21.9. And we still got four guys to fill out you know, a $50,000 deal. Like say you love, like I like, and let's just say you want Rom and Victor, because maybe you think Victor, I think Victor is going to do pretty well. Um, you know, that's 40,100. So that leaves you 9,900 um, to fill out your team. I don't even think that's possible. <laughs> you know, no, it's not. So you, you literally can't, that's not even, a, even if you think these guys are going to do the best, those four, that combination doesn't allow a team to be filled. So then you start, I mean, that's where this tool comes in handy is to start seeing, okay, how many combos do I want of this team or that team or this deal? Because I'm going to have to come down here and pick up some of these guys, which guys have the better chance of playing at least three and possibly four um, you know, does Brooks have upside that maybe someone else doesn't? Maybe you think Finau winds up getting hot and he goes in for four. So him as a captain there, then you get Cantley and Shoffley, maybe not a captain, but you can start, you know, doing some of those combo teams and having, you know, I like Toblin a lot. So I put him in Well, now I got 36, eight, that leaves me 13,200 for my last two spots, a lot more doable, um, you know, so if you're high on, you know, say Poulter, you know, he's going to keep his run going. You, you know, he's in there. Now you got 7,800 left. So you can fit Fleetwood or more cow and have some money left over, you know, that kind of stuff, which in the green machine, um, our lineup optimizer has this load, has not this, but it has the slate loaded. So you can build your stacks. You can build your player pool. Um, you can build rules. Um, you know, if I have Cantley or, or, you know, say you're doing 50 lineups, you want 20 Cantley and Shoffley lineups. Well, you know, you can click that rule in there to say, include these two in at least 20 lineups, stuff like that. So it, it will be time consuming to, I mean, if you're doing big MME, if you're doing one to three max stuff, I mean, this tool will guide you in some of the better optimal lineups by just looking at your points and then tweaking stuff. Say, all right, what if, what if Brooks plays for and, and Fina doesn't or, or, you know, switching up combos. What I will use this for, like I mentioned on Smash Factor, is if I'm doing 150 lineups, which I will, uh, whether it's in the, if you guys are, it doesn't matter if you're doing a dime, quarter, dollar, $10, the big one, I think on DraftKings. Um, I may have three to five scenarios that I work through on this tool and by working through it, I go, all right, all right, here's my player pool in scenario one, and here's my captain pool. And here's my player pool in scenario two and my captain pool and build 30 lineups out of that scenario. Build 30 lineups, build 30 lineups, build 30 lineups, build 30 lineups, and you get 150. Maybe you do it that way. Maybe you want to be more aggressive and you build 50 lineups three ways. I mean, there's many ways to do it um, this week. 25 lineups six ways. I mean, however you want to do it instead of feeling lost in the weeds and trying to do this mentally, I felt like building this tool would at least allow you 
very easily to do, you know, matchups, results, and all the scoring and possible captain's uh, points and optimal situations load for you. You don't have to do anything. Um, as you have these expected matches, they flow back over here. So now you can kind of see, okay, I kind of see five, five, four, four, four. And if you go back and look, there's, I think in 2018, there was only two euros and three USA or vice versa. I think there was only five guys that played all five matches. I've heard a lot of he's going to play five. He's going to play five. He's going to play five. I, I don't know if that's necessarily true. I was kind of in that mind thinking as well, like yesterday morning and I went and kind of looked at some of the results and these are totally different captains. So who knows? Um, but what I would probably lean on is what's, I would probably have this as what's a good floor number um, and some of these guys, you may go, I know they're probably going to play five. Uh, I got a feeling Roy and Rom are going to play five. Maybe you don't think Hovland does. Maybe Hovland plays four, Garcia plays four, something like that. And, and just get it in that realm. And then now you, all you got to do work it, worry about is, okay, does this matches one per guy kind of line up with how you think they're going to perform for the week? And if not, you go over here, tweak a little bit, tweak a little bit, get this in order and then you start looking at, all right, based on this, within my salary restriction and having to pick a captain, where are some optimal builds or player pool builds that allow me that? Um, so hopefully that, you know, I don't want to go too long. This is going to be just under 30 minutes total. Hopefully that helps you. I'll be loading this. Um, so when I send it out tonight, it'll have, you know, so, I mean, this will just be blank. And then you can come in here and, and build your, your guys however you want it. You know, these guys will be blank. Everything will be blank. I'll leave this one. That's my day one projections, kind of this. Uh, and then we'll update. We can all update that, obviously, Thursday after we know for sure. But I'm going to go ahead and have a bunch of scenarios out on what I think because I don't want to do it all Thursday night. It's a very early start Friday, I think, 7 a.m. Eastern, 4 Pacific Eastern. I mean, 4 Pacific um, a.m. <laughs> Friday morning because I got to get 36 in, right? Uh, less daylight, stuff like that. So they are starting early. So I plan accordingly if you plan on doing it. I do think this will help us a lot this this week. Um, if you're not a member and you're seeing all this, uh, you know, I do some of these custom tools for many of the, you know, match play is one I've u utilized before um, that we've done good stuff with. So, you know, it's just another added bonus of being a member. Come check us out for the week. Use cup, get 15% off and you get a seven day risk-free trial either way. Appreciate you guys. I will see you guys tomorrow morning. Uh, have a blessed evening. Thank you. Goodbye.